Yeah. Let me throw something out. <laughs> this is Libby Road and the Sound Epistemology Podcast. Welcome back to the podcast and to the Street Epistemology Survey. In this series, we're not engaging in a typical SE conversation in which we examine one's epistemology. Rather, we're discussing how much we agree with statements regarding truth. And in this episode, we also explore how important it is for our beliefs to match reality, examples of when our beliefs don't necessarily need to match reality, Zen and the art of roof rack installation, and the power of prayer. Here's number 18. The most important criteria for my beliefs is that they match reality. And I say strongly agree. And I say and you say neutral. neutral. <laughs> Again. Yeah, so again I say neutral because I feel like there's room to agree and disagree, not just agree or just disagree. Mm -hmm. um, there are some times when the most important criteria for your beliefs is that they don't match reality? There's times when they don't have to. There are times when your beliefs don't have to match reality. Or when, or it's not important. Because that's what this says. Yeah, yeah. The most important criteria for my beliefs is that they match reality. Yeah, that is a very accurate statement, I would say. For me. Okay. So let me rephrase it real fast. You're saying that there are times when the most important criteria for your beliefs is that they don't match reality. I don't know. Say that again. Say that again. I'm, I'm kind of re... I'm putting this in what I think you're saying so that I make sure that I understand what you're saying. Yeah, you're trying to rewrite this question so that my neutral statement is the statement or my neutral answer is the statement. And yeah, I want to make sure that I understand your answer. <clears throat> okay. Um, and you're saying by being neutral and uh, that there's room to disagree and disagree. Mm -hmm about this statement um, and by sometimes the most important criteria for my beliefs is not necessarily that they match reality okay okay or that it's not always the most important criteria for me that my beliefs match reality okay would you like to share an example of a time when what you're currently believing it's not important that it matches with reality if you can't think of one that's okay i'm just curious yeah. i'm just curious if you have an example of when believing something isn't important if it matches reality for you yeah, I mean, I, I keep coming back to my relationship with my anger. I think I've talked about this in an earlier question, where my belief is that I can have a relationship with my anger where I purely observe it happening and do not react to it happening by calling someone a cunt or, you know, uh, being demonstrative in some way or in insulting someone or whatever, you know, unskillful reaction I might have in anger mind is no longer uh, a way that I choose to conduct myself. Okay. And because of how difficult it's been to not 
I'll give you a perfect example. I changed the oil in my car, worked on the car. I changed the oil filter, the air filter, the oil itself, put, installed a new kayak rack on top of the car. And at the best of times, that can be, well, not at the best of times. Now I think that'll be a lot easier job because I've done it in this car. I'm familiar with all the silly little bits you've got to fiddle with and fuck around with and make sure you've got this size tool and that thing catching drips You'll be here. better prepared to do it next time knowing that, knowing all the things that you learned doing it this time. <clears throat> right, and so the process of learning that is, it can bring up some frustrations because it, it, it can be frustrating working on um, turning wrenches. And my yeah uh, why i do it doesn't matter um but by the sixth hour after fiddling with having to go get the right tool coming back uh realizing i could approach it from a different from underneath the car than on top doing so starting again kind of thing and then getting to getting that done completing that um all the different silly tri trials and tribulations that came up that i kept cool about and kept present with and realize going into it I'm gonna have I'm gonna it's gonna be helpful for me to have a high level of gumption and space to experience things not going smoothly because that's can often happen when you're working on a car and was able to maintain that <clears throat> but toward the sixth hour when I was out in full sunlight feeling overheated ready to be done with this um, and fiddling with the silly little parts that go together to build the particular kayak rack that I have. Um, one of the uh, bolts, nuts and bolts mechanisms uh, slipped out, fell out and rolled under the car and rather than just, rather than have the capacity to just, okay, now I'm gonna go under the car and get the nut and bolt. Mm -hmm. I, I yelled out uh, expletives mm -hmm. um, and I mean it feels good to do that because you just let off the steam, mm -hmm. let off the anger, what have you. Mm -hmm. but it's I better to yell at a tool than at a person. <laughs> yeah, sure, but then the poor people that are around that hear me yelling, they, oh. you know, that's, that's, no, that's no fun. <laughs> yeah. It's no fun to be around someone when they're, you know, yeah. being demonstrative like that. Yeah, and that's that, been the that's core true. of you know, why I, I work on my anger the way I do, because mm -hmm. I, I don't want to be the person that's difficult to be around like that. I've been around that, and I don't like it. And I see myself doing it, and I see the looks on people's faces around me, and I think, oh, this is, it's not, this is not how I want to be remembered, or how I want the experience of hanging out with me to be remembered. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's a very clever way to behave. But time and time again, I do it such that my belief is I can change my relationship with anger mm -hmm. to where even at hour eight and going into heat stroke, I would be able to go, well, that's frustrating, certainly. And then get the thing, get the nut out from underneath the car and carry on with it and complete the exercise. And that's where I'm aiming. And my belief is that I can get to that place, the even, even more place, get to a place of laughing that, oh, of course the nut fell under the car, ha ha ha. Or something, just in a neutral reaction to, to something like that. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't, my belief that I can achieve that certainly does not match my reality. Because my reality is, is it's, it, at some point I will get so fucked off with something that I will yell cunt at the top of my voice or, or something along those lines. Um, so and that's I, the current reality. The current the reality is, yeah. is that you have a hard time dealing with anger. Yeah. But you believe that there could be a point in time in the future where, you're, where your relationship with anger is Observational. More, more positive. 
Yeah, I mean, I still have the anger. I'm not, I'm not mm -hmm. suggesting for a minute that the anger goes away. Right. No, I'm but your relationship change. would change. Yeah. yeah. Improve. Yeah. yeah. So, let me throw something out. <laughs> if you believe that you put enough oil in the crankcase, mm -hmm. is it important for that to belief to line up with reality? I'll revert you to my answer neutral. Right. In that circumstance, okay. yes it is. So it, 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 you're in, would, you, would it be accurate to say that you're indifferent about that belief being important to match up with reality or not? About the crankcase oil? Yeah. No, I'm not indifferent about that. I would want to bloody well make sure the job's done properly. So the Why car neutral then? Because I also am, con con I also feel contrary to that. That I still believe, even though all evidence seems to point to it doesn't, uh, at some point I will yell out the word cunt when I'm frustrated, that I can achieve not doing that. No, I'm talking about, we're, we're st staying with the, the belief that you have filled the crankcase with enough oil. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... You, you put in enough oil, it says, to put in. Um, you've measured it five times. You've, you've started it, let it run, measure it again. You know, you've, you're, you've done all the steps to be confident that you've filled the crankcase with enough oil. Mm -hmm. Your belief is, I filled this with enough oil. Is it important for your belief about the amount of oil in the crankcase to line up with reality, that there is en th that there is enough oil in the crankcase. This is a perfect example of when, yes, it would be very important to me that my belief that there's enough oil lines up with the reality of there being enough oil. Okay, so yes. why is that important? Why is it important for that belief to be accurate in reality? Versus neutral or, versus or disagreeing. Yeah. yeah. Why is it important for that belief to be accurate and not other beliefs? Well, that particular one, because I don't want my fucking car to seize up when right. I'm driving it. Right. So it's situational, really. Right. And why what I think I understand you saying is that some beliefs, it's not important to line up with reality. Right, that's why I'm neutral on this, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, there's going to be some where it'd be a 98, 99, and there's going to be some where there's a one and a half or two where the belief is more important than the fact that it matches reality. How do you decide which beliefs <clears throat> should match with reality? H how do you decide when it is important? Hmm. I suppose it's a matter of what the consequences are going to be, yeah. If the consequence is the car no longer runs, it becomes important. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know what the consequence of... of the statement I, or the example I provided, what the consequences would be there of it not mattering that it doesn't line up. Because if it mattered, I'd never achieve it. And I would have to ask every person that cares about me, that wants to spend time with me, to accept that at some point I will yell expletives at the top of my voice and make the situation uncomfortable, more uncomfortable than it needs to be. And I know people that have asked that. I am unwilling to ask. I am now no longer willing to ask people to accept that in me. And I don't think it's fair of anyone to ask someone to accept that kind of behavior. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so what does that have to do with the importance for your beliefs to match reality? Well, in order for me to grow past that, it would need to be unimportant that my belief matches reality couldn't it be couldn't it be reality that 
in the future, you will have changed your relationship with anger. Like, I think a while ago, we used that example, and you said that it's reality that you will never have a positive mm. relationship with anger, right? I might have said that, yeah. yeah. It feels that way sometimes. Right. I guess, and this might be going off topic, but how do you how do you know that that's that you'll never have a, a productive relationship with anger? Because of the evidence. But how do you know? How, what's the evidence that tells you that it would never be? Well, that's where the belief comes in because I believe that I will overcome it. Okay. Reality certain do, certainly doesn't seem to be showing me that. Right. So currently, currently. Currently. Yeah. And, and previously, yeah. you know, a good indicator of the future is the past yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, uh, uh, inference. You're making an inference based on previous, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and so, but I'm, I, I don't, I, I'm not just going to give up and say, well, then that's as good as it's going to get. Cause I, what about facts of reality currently? Does that, does that change anything? about how you would view this instead of making claims about your emotions if making claims about objective reality um is there is there a situation where it's not important that your beliefs match up reality about fact claims so you're asking for a different example i think yeah something more fact-based and not emotion emotion based okay. like about how the world works right um a different example of where Rather than going into the agree, I go into the disagree where it doesn't, it isn't important for my beliefs to match reality. Yeah. And you're wanting an example based on something that's a bit more concrete, like the right. house is red. It's, I believe it's not red, but it, it's unimportant that it doesn't match reality. Yeah. Um, that's a grotesque example and wasn't one I put any thought into. Um, yeah, so another example. An example of when it's not important for your belief to match reality. I'm trying to think of a belief that I have that doesn't match reality. Well, uh, it, it doesn't have to be an example of that. It can be an example of where it doesn't matter. Oh, I see. Where it doesn't matter if it matches reality. Right. Okay. <clears throat> um, I just thought of one, but I don't know if I want to talk about that one right now. That's okay. So We can, we can come back to this at a different time, too. Or well, if you don't mind embracing the silence, sure. I'm sure I could think of one. Yeah. Well, this wouldn't be a personal one, but I think it would be an example of one. Um, my sports team is the best sports team in the world. Belief. Yeah. Match reality? Yeah. Probably not. Yeah. And so... That's more subjective though, right? That's not like a fact claim. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you're looking That's like for a preference. A like, maybe... Maybe we can think about that. And another angle I could come at this is... 
do you think it's a good idea for people to walk around with beliefs that don't match reality? Yeah, that's where I would think it would not be a good idea. I don't think it's a good idea to walk around with a lot of beliefs, but I can see where they would serve you, and that's why I go neutral on this. I could see where they would be helpful. Pragmatic, utilitarian. Maybe even survival, you know, as a way to survive as something. A, yeah. Can, can somebody believe something that isn't true, and that belief cause them to survive, does that make it justified? Does that make that belief justified? Yeah. <laughs> Answer that question. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't make it more or less true. That's for sure. Absolutely not. Yeah. I think it's important for people's beliefs to match reality. I think it's, I think it's, I think the most important criteria for my beliefs is that they match reality. I strongly, I strongly agree with that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and we've talked a little bit about your ability to embrace that you could possibly do something that you have absolutely no ability to do currently. Um, and so I suppose a good example would be, or I guess a, a question for you would be, mm -hmm given that you are looking at back surgery mm -hmm. and given where you're at now with being able to bend down and lift heavy objects um, and not knowing what the outcome is going to be of the surgery, mm -hmm. we can only assume they know what they're doing and that there will be positive results and that's what we're all going to be focused on. Well, I, I don't have to only assume. I can, I can look at the previous surgeries that this particular doctor has done. Mm -hmm. We have evidence of all of these surgeries that he's performed in which people got better. So we don't have to rely on assumptions that it's going to go well. Yeah, we've got some uh, yeah. evidence-based. Right. And the method that he's using mm -hmm. is a reliable method to perform the surgery. Okay. And we have as many examples as I would probably need to be confident. Now that's not saying that something couldn't go wrong. Yeah, but I don't mean that. I just yeah. mean like the like how successful. Like do you believe that you will lift heavy objects again unaided? Do I believe that I will ever do that again? Mm -hmm. I'm confident that I'll be able to do that again. I'm confident because of and it's not based on bad Faith, reasoning. So, yeah. It's based on evidence. Yeah. What you've seen in physical therapy and re in, in uh, recovery and, the, yeah. and how well the surgeries themselves go. Okay. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so you're basing your assumption that you could get there on the fact that others before you have. Yeah. I think it's, I don't think you, I wouldn't call it an assumption. I would call it, it I would call yeah. it a, a, uh, a, a confident I, I would be confident that based on this evidence this is likely what's going to happen um, I don't want to switch gears or anything but I, I am curious do you, do you believe that there's any kind of miracles that have ever happened what do you mean by miracle like against all odds, uh, some, like a, a, an example of like a child healing from leukemia against all odds and it just, they didn't even get treatment and they just, they got better. A miracle in that regard. Well, if that's the definition of miracle that we're using, yeah, I think that happens. I think that can happen. Okay. Uh, cancer goes away for lots of different reasons. Mm -hmm. Um, sometimes it it um, goes into remission, and we don't know why. Um, what I attribute that miracle to is maybe different than what somebody else might attribute that miracle sure, to. Sure. Uh, I think weird things happen. Mm -hmm. I think I think 
things that we can't explain necessarily. Um, I think those do happen. And I would say that we may not know why. And we would need to investigate further to find out why. Mm -hmm. And it would be unskillful to attribute that without, you know, being... It would be unskillful to attribute a miracle to, say, some kind of natural, supernatural cause without evidence mm -hmm. for that. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, I think that backfired on me a little bit, but it's... Um, yeah, I was looking at, like, if you believe impossible things can happen, which I think we kind of got to, but... Well, we wouldn't you, call them impossible all, if yeah, it happened. Until we explained them. Mm -hmm. They'd be impossible until we proved how they were possible. Right. Or they would be impossible. They're in, the, they're in the box of impossible until we have evidence that they are possible. Until they're proven wrong. No, until, until there's evidence uh, that they're even possible evidence of how they happen well I'm, I'm saying they happen and you're saying yeah we we find out how they happened sometimes sometimes we don't and then what's that called that mean that's called i don't know we need to investigate further but that it's not like i think it's, it's dangerous to say yeah. it's dangerous to say this miracle happened and we don't understand how it happened therefore this happened or therefore, this is the reason. If yeah. we don't have the reason, if we don't, yeah, yeah. if we don't understand, yeah, yeah. I would rather say I don't know yet. I don't understand this, mm -hmm. and I'm okay with not knowing and mm -hmm. not understanding. But I'm not going to take the leap that I'm going to attribute this to some supernatural thing. Mm -hmm. Power of prayer. Or... Right. Yeah. Because we have evidence of when uh, prayer, intercessory prayer. Uh, can actually do more harm than uh, than than help. When do we have evidence of that? Uh, well, I can show you a Harvard study that demonstrates that. The prayer, the people getting together and focusing on a positive outcome actually went yep. wrong. Causes causes some to get worse hmm. because there's this idea of well, all these people are praying for me causes my body to feel more stress mm. and makes the disease worse because of the stress that your body feels because well I need to be I need to get better because all these people are praying for me I'll show you I'll show you the study it's pretty interesting yeah because it, it's it's another thing that's counterintuitive it's like well if I think that all these people are praying for me then that's going to help me be more positive or whatever but Unless you don't believe, <laughs> or unless you're wanting it to be proven to a bigger audience of people and the pressure's on you to perform and get better. Yeah, that's a horrible fucking conundrum. Jesus. I'll show it to you. It's pretty interesting. 